The Ports of Norfolk, Virginia, Winter, 1855. The punishment? 21 slaves sent back into bondage. And for the captain? 10 years and 6 months in prison. Captain Alfred Fountain is willing to do anything to hide the fugitives on his boat. He's even willing to look for them in order to keep them hidden. Hi, my name is Jeremy, and welcome to Elwyn Studios, where we explore stories of great American heroes throughout history. Captain Fountain had just smuggled 21 runaway slaves onto his schooner. They were taken aboard in a pile of hay. But the town is buzzing. The word is out that several slaves got away from their masters and are trying to get across the Mason-Dixon line. The mayor himself and a group of men armed with axes and spears make their way to Captain Fountain's ship. Now the captain is no ordinary man. William Still, in his record, says that the captain is a man of thought, rough and rugged, with a large head, large mouth, large eyes, and heavy eyebrows. He could hide the inner workings of his mind and feelings, and he had the faith of a martyr and Bowie knives. He was a true friend of the slave, and his skill, bravery, and success stamped him as one of the most daring and heroic captains ever to be connected with the Underground Railroad. In short, the mayor and his men had no idea what they were up against. The captain lets the men on board, and after looking around for a bit, the mayor tells his men to start stabbing the hay with their spears. They do it with an excitement of a cat in the middle of a laser tag game. But there's no blood, and no whatever sound people make when they get stabbed. The mayor is confused, and obviously believes that he made a huge mistake. But he can't go back now. He's come too far. So he tells his men to pick up their axes and get to work. One of the men, who had obviously seen too many movies, or whatever the 1800s equivalent is, started hacking at the deck and different parts of the ship. Meanwhile, Captain Fountain stood there as though he was perfectly fine with everything going on. In actuality, he was observing. It was clear that the mayor and his men had no idea how to search a boat. Instead of looking for a room that could hide 21 people, they were just going around and hitting random things with their axes. He knew that if this went on, they would eventually, and accidentally, stumble on the 21 fugitives hiding on his boat. But if he stopped them, they would only be more convinced that he was hiding something from them. So he decided to use a little misdirection. He took one of the axes and told the mayor that it would be way faster if he did the search himself. And so with one swing, he slammed the axe into the deck, splitting the wood. The mayor was in shock. Who wrecks their own boat? The floorboards had split, as did the mayor's courage under the over-exaggerated swing of the captain. By the time the captain's second blow hit the deck, the intruders, who were very confused and frightened at the same time, decided that it was about time for them to leave. And so a few minutes later, they finished up their search and were gone. William Still, in his record, said that Daniel in the lion's den was not safer than the 21 passengers secreted on Captain Fountain's boat. The ports of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Winter, 1855. The reward? 21 Americans, able to live out the rest of their days in freedom. And for the captain? A lifetime of satisfaction. If you have any questions about Captain Fountain, the Underground Railroad, or Elwyn Studios, you can put it in the comments section below, and you can click on this video here to learn more about that guy that I kept quoting in this episode.